Hello, friends, and welcome to the Honeycast. Today, I'm actually going to be talking about a personal journey that I am on. I am not really going to be following any notes or wanting to teach you anything, but I would love for you to sit back and listen because you may hear yourself in this story and in the season that I'm in right now. And maybe you're not in the season that I'm in, but I guarantee you might go into this season, you might have been in this season, and you didn't know what to do. And I want to share with you the tips and the things that I am doing right now to take care of myself in my midlife season. So I'm 55 and I'm in menopause. And I would say that the majority of my life, I feel like I could just power through anything. There have been several times in my life where I've not been able to, but not many. I've been able to just do it anyway. Not saying that that's a good thing because sometimes we don't need to power through. Sometimes we need to listen to our body and ask what our body needs. And in this season of menopause, I will say what I've learned is that we become less resilient. And I didn't really like hearing that news. <laughs> I didn't like the news of this could last five to 10 years, the perimenopause years. There was a lot of things in this season that I really didn't want to hear and I didn't like. And I thought when I was younger, that's not going to be me. I'm going to be different. I'm going to do this differently. And although I have had some good habits in the past that have served me and not so good habits as well that I've learned to overcome and am learning to overcome, it just wasn't up to me to decide that I could just do it anyway. My body is talking. It was talking. It talks to us. And becoming less resilient is not necessarily a bad thing because there are other things that really outweigh that. Some things about being in midlife are amazing that you don't get to experience when you're in your earlier years. And so I kind of had to change my attitude to looking at what is good and what I get to do and honoring my body. And this is really what this topic is about right now is how can we honor our bodies? There are many ways. There are many ways. Taking care of our body is number one. And so, like I said, I'm not really going to teach or preach or tell everybody what to do. I'm going to share with you my last six, six-ish months and what I am learning and what I'm learning about how to take care of myself and how it looks different in this season. And it's almost a must that I do because I can't power through anymore like I do. And so backing up to last year, mid-year, we had a family crisis. One of my sons was struggling with a mental illness and it didn't really pop out of nowhere, but it did it it did culminate in a pretty scary episode. And so prior to that, we had seen things that were going on. We're very concerned. Um, as a mama, I'm up in the night just praying for my my children, my family, and also hormones has me up. And that has been difficult because when we don't get that restorative sleep, so many things are harder the next day. Our cortisol levels are higher. We have cravings. We might need caffeine to kind of get through the day. We may over-caffeinate. My brain wasn't really functioning properly. I really, you know, can't show up in the the fullness and the energy that I want to and I once had. And so the lack of sleep and also just the stress of not knowing what's going to happen and being in a day in, day out, very hard situation was was draining. It was draining my adrenals. It was draining my hope and faith. It was it was really a difficult season. And I felt like I was just surviving. I was doing the minor things that I needed to do, continuing to exercise and feeding my body well, could not sleep at all, Tr tried so, so many things. All the things I teach you guys, I'm trying all of those and working on those and practicing those sleep routine and working with my naturopathic doctor. And she's helped me somewhat dial this in. And then 
getting on bioidentical hormone therapy has been a game changer in some areas, but not all areas. And so although I was being supported and I would say my thyroid has been optimized and that's a huge thing for us in midlife, I will say this, even if you've never had thyroid issues as we age, our thyroid can get a little bit sluggish as as our liver and our digestive system, it all really works together. And so making sure you have that optimization of your thyroid is really helpful for those energy levels and, and, and metabolism and weight loss. So I was working on all of that, but you know, the body and the mind uh, can only handle so much. And so it was just such a difficult season. And I really just kind of survived getting through it. So fast forward, we ended up helping this particular uh, young adult, and he actually is doing amazing. And I feel like it's just really a miracle. It is, it's night and day where we were, but what we had to go through to get there, there was just so much in question, like, how are we going to do this? Who's going to help us? How are we going to pay for this? Is he going to be okay? Is, you know, this is a lifelong diagnosis. What is this going to look like? And there was just so much worry, I guess. And that worry, and it just really brought me low and the lack of sleeping. Um, So anyway, fast forward, we, we made it through that crisis and we got to some stabilization and things started to level out, but yet my nervous system was so turned on. This is something that we really can't help as we age. Our nervous system is on it can get on overdrive very easily because we don't have estrogen that really is helping us calm down and progesterone especially that's our our low anxiety uh, feel good hormone and even testosterone is our feel good hormone and our get stuff done our motivation and so with all of those declining hormones our nervous system can get overloaded and it can just stay in that fight or flight, which really drains the adrenals. It really brings down the whole body. And my nervous system was so sensitive. I mean, I was jumpy. I could just get anxious at the drop of a pin. And all the while, you know, I'm showing up for my family and my my friends and my and, and my business and my clients who I'm so, you know, wanting to support and coach and, and also, you know, sharing about this, even my own journey and what I'm learning. And it really caused me to dig in to, okay, what is a new way for me to handle this low energy? I was so, and and still am fighting the, the low energy. And in the past, like I said, I would just decide, well, I can't afford this, not financially, but I can't afford to slow down or to not show up or to delegate, or to take care of myself, I would take care of myself at the last resort. I would burn the candle at both ends, end up with adrenal fatigue, and just really have, you know, have a a health issue crisis, you know, to overcome after that. And I had all these excuses. I don't have time. They need me. Nobody else can do this. I'm so important. What, you know, just, and sometimes you do have to show up. I get it. But what I'm learning is that we really can stop and take care of ourselves. We can, I work with so many women and I will say the one theme that I see is that we will not stop and take care of ourselves unless something drastic happens. And we don't feel like we deserve it. We don't feel like we have the space for it. And what I'm gonna say is it is important to invest and fill your vessel so that you can give. And it is important and okay to set boundaries and to say no and to take some time to rest. And this is what I've had to do and what I've learned in this season. And I will tell you this, my family and friends have been amazing. I don't know if you're in the same boat and people are still going to want things from you and be upset if you're not doing certain things, but I really had a lot of freedom And also I have, you know, nine children. My last three are 17, 13, and 11. And very, they can take care of themselves, honestly. They could run the household. And then my husband is working from home now. If he weren't working from home, this might be a little different. Everybody can take some space to take care of yourself. So my story may look a little different than yours, but we ended up 
going to, um, well, we had a vacation plan for the whole year. We had a two week vacation plan at the beach. We were looking forward to it. We didn't know if we were going to get to go. We didn't know if our particular son was going to be able to come with us or just what was going to happen, but it all worked out. And we had a lot of family and friends there, like 24 of us. And it was a lot. It was amazing, but it was a lot that, and, and I didn't even cook. We all had different nights. We all delegated responsibilities and whatnot, but just that level of being on and, and noise and lots of people, it was amazing. And part of it was relaxing, but part of it was exhausting. And I came back from that vacation. I don't know if you felt like this before, and I needed another vacation. I was exhausted. I mean, to the nth degree. I felt like I was crawl. I just had to crawl on the ground to even get where I wanted to be. And I was still maintaining as much as I could. But I started to I started to to say no to things that I just desperately wanted to do. I wanted to go watch my grandkids, but I just really needed to say no for now. I wa- I host our whole family on Sundays, up to 15-ish people, and I was cooking every single Sunday no matter what. And I would find myself just after cooking and after the day, just wiped out, getting in bed at 7.30 or 8 and feeling really down and negative and just exhausted. You know, when you just get to that point, it it really is hard to keep going. And then I'd wake up the next day and, you know, work on, get your trim on or coaching or help one of the kids with school. And I ended up um, deciding that I was going to take a season of rest, that I wasn't going to plan anything in the evenings after four or five, because I just was really tired, that I was going to make sure I had fun in my week, which looks like pickleball that I was going to make sure I had connection with friends. And so I started doing some things like that. I also started upping my protein and my e-meals. And I was already doing a lot of e-meal, energizing meals. If you're not a trim healthy mama, that is your carbohydrate meal and the protein and carbohydrates. So I started doing some things like that and supporting my adrenals. And that same time I'm doing that, I went to the doctor and got tested and I I had mold again. So I'd had a mold issue, which made me feel really bad. And we cleaned my house, thousands of dollars to remediate that, supplements and all kinds of stuff. It went away. And then suddenly, for whatever reason, we don't know, it's back. And, And that's part of also that drain on my body. So was trying to take care of myself, but still just feeling like I'm in a pit And then, uh, don't ask me why I went ahead and went through with this, but it's a good thing now. But so I had a, and and part of my questioning about feeling bad was I had a root canal that never was right. And for 10 years, this particular tooth um, has bothered me a little bit. And I ended up going to a natural dentist and he took a 3D of my mouth, which that's a whole nother story so much to be done in my mouth with my teeth, which really impact our health. And so I had the one tooth with the root canal and it was abscessed. And so they were going to need to extract the tooth, which I had a terrible experience with the other side tooth extraction because my my roots are very crooked, I guess, and really difficult to get that tooth out. And he was going to take the tooth out and then do an implant, which is a whole process. If, if you guys have done this, you know, it, it's take the tooth out. Then they clean out the abscess. Then they drill in your bone and then they pack it. They put it implant in there. I got a ceramic implant. And then they, they take your blood out of your arm and your, I believe it's your red blood cells or white blood cells. I can't remember either one maybe it's white blood cells, and they mix it with this bone matrix, and then they pack it in there, and you can't chew for a whole month. And so it did not go as planned, and I had some complications, and they had to reconstruct my gum, and it was terrible. It was so painful. I, first of all, was in a forced fast. I could eat soup and smoothies, but I couldn't get full on that. So I immediately just went into this never feeling full. And then the first week of the implant, there was no pain whatsoever. I was so amazed. I was like, oh my goodness, this is nothing like the last one I did. But what happened was I busted a suture somehow and got a dry socket. And for one week, 
my face and my my head and my tooth constant pain 24/7 for about 8 days. So I was hungry. I was hungry, angry, and tired. I wasn't lonely, but I was definitely locked up in my room. I couldn't even hardly function. And they had to reconstruct my gum because it had fallen down because of the suture broke. And that was very painful. And I had to go back and it was just a slow, I was healing slowly. And so it was very, very difficult. And finally, after three and a half weeks, I finally began to get out of pain in my mouth and my gum is healing. It's healing now. I'm going to get that cap on here February 12th and I can't wait because I can't chew on that side, but at least I could have regular food. But when I started eating again, I started having gallbladder issues and my body really just felt terrible. Body aches and don't know if it's hormone related, if it's mold related, if it's who knows, you know, I just went through so much with my body and more. And so on New Year's Eve, we had a huge get together here. We have a building that we've been building for the last year, which is going to ha- be a home to my office. So right now I'm in my closet doing a podcast, which is fine, but pretty soon I'm going to have my own office. And it, it's a building where our kids and, and family members are going to work on cars and flip cars, and it'll be a hangout area. We've been working on this and, and dreaming about this for a long time because we have a, a pretty small house. We're 1,700 square feet, and there was 13 people living here. Now we have less than that, and we also have a building out back, or we call it the apartment shed. But this building has been, you know, in the works. And so we decided we we finally got it to a place where we could house people in there, put heaters in there. It's it's not done. But we had all of our kids and their friends come out and we stayed up late singing karaoke, which was so fun and line dancing and all kinds of stuff. And the next day I felt like a truck hit me. It just, it was like I hit a wall. Um, and that was that was January 1st. And I remember we went to our friend's house and we were watching the football games and I could not get off the couch. I could not get out of their chair. And my my mouth was hurting still a little bit. And I just was like, I, I've got to do something drastic here. So I already had an appointment for my naturopath. Actually, she's, a, she's not a naturopath. She is an MD. And she did the scan and she did everything. And and she seemed to think that it was the mold that was back that was causing all of these issues. So we are, of course, dealing with that, but that's sort of a, you know, a, a long process. So I just decided my job right now is to restore myself. That's, that's my job. I know it's hard as a woman, you can't be like, well, let me stop my life and heal or get restored. But I knew that I had to do this and that my body, my hormones, my everything would thank me for it and that it was going to require me sacrifice in saying no to certain things and no to people. And, you know, I felt compelled, like, I just can't keep going on like this. I can't do this. So I did that day after the second, actually, I went throughout that week because that's when I went to the doctor the following Sunday. Um, I had everybody over at the house. I was exhausted. I had asked people to bring food and only one daughter out of eight kids or nine kids brought a charcuterie board that was enough for like four people. Luckily, I had had some stuff made and that that was just it for me that day. I remember sitting in the chair and my daughter, she, she does hair and uh, she was coloring my hair and, you know, I was just going... Judah, I am just, I'm just so tired. I'm really going to need to just, you know, do something about this. And so I ended up coming up. I felt like, okay, coach Chris is going to coach Chris. And so my, my name is Christina. And so I always talk to myself when we need to have a, a really good or hard or any type of conversation. I'm like, okay, Christina, coach Chris is going to coach you. What would you do with a client right now? And this is what I ended up doing for me because this is what I needed to do. And this is the space that I right now can create for myself. So I decided to go on a 21 day detox. No, not your crazy juicing and all that kind of stuff, but 
a gentle detox, which is actually what I lead my tribe members through in April. It's trim healthy friendly, and it's just focusing on liver friendly foods and really building energy and cleansing gently. And so I put a protocol together for myself. I had already had a regime in getting rid of the mold. And so I went on that particular regime where I'm killing the mold and using a a binder to get it out of my system and then a detox protocol to support liver and digestion, which includes kefir every day, as well as probiotic and a liver support and an anti-inflammation supplement. So I started with all the things that I have in my toolbox. Normally, I don't do all the things. That's what I love about having a toolbox is I've got different tools for different seasons. And this season required SOS. (laughs) She is going down, people. We got to help her. So I made a protocol for myself that I committed to. It wasn't like, oh, I might, no, no, I'm doing all this. I made a daily checklist. And so this is a lot for some of you that maybe you're not at the end of yourself or hitting a wall, but where are you in that spectrum, in that spectrum of, you know, energy and feeling good and what you need to do for yourself? Maybe you can implement a couple of things. And the way that I implement these things is very strategic because I do what's called habit stacking. So I'm not just throwing something new at myself without having a system to make sure it gets done. And this is one of my favorite things that I love doing with my coaching clients is, yeah, okay, let's do meal planning, but let's figure out a system so that you are consistent with it. And same thing with all the other lifestyle habits. So for me, this is what I decided to do. I don't have my notes in front of me, but hopefully I won't forget them. There was a long list, but I need to do at least five of these particular things each day for restoration. And I just kept telling myself, this is a reset and restoration. It's just a season and I'll be back on the train saying yes to things and providing and watching grandkids and all the things. But right now, this is what I need to do. So each day is I'm deep breathing and I'm doing three sets of 10 deep breaths and I hold it for as long as I can at the end of the 10. This turns on the vagus nerve. That turns on our rest and digest the parasympathetic nervous system. So I'm working from the inside out as well as the outside in. I'm managing stress and I'm getting that oxygen to my body that is necessary. And so I'm trying to do two sessions a day, one in the morning and then one in the evening when I get in bed. So I'm doing the deep breathing. Another thing that I'm doing is some type of everyday movement. I've put a hold on heavy weightlifting right now. I know I'm going to get back at it, but right now it's a no. Same thing with my pickleball. I was playing pickleball three, four times a week. And after two hours of pickleball, one day I came home and I could not get out of the bed the rest of the day. That tells me my adrenals are going, this is too much this is too much. You need to back off. And I didn't want to because I had so much fun and I love it. So I put pickleball on hold. But what I said was, if I have the energy, then I will play for an hour and a half. If I have energy, if I don't, then I'm not going to, because I know I'm going to play later on next month, whenever. So the everyday movement for me is I've got a little under desk treadmill that I ordered very cheaply. I'll have I'll have all the links in the show notes if you guys are interested. But basically it can slide under my desk while I'm working or I can just pull it out and I can do a 30 minute walk on that. Or one of my favorites is my vibration plate. Just do a body weight workout on my vib- vibration plate or a core workout or a glute workout with no weights. And that right there, so when you work out for 15 minutes, you actually get double. So I s- expend less, well, I expend more energy for sure, but a less amount of time, which is what you need. If you have adrenal fatigue or you're going through a low season, you want to have restoration exercises more than killing yourself exercises. That would be Pilates, that would be swimming, that would be rebounding for short periods of time, vibration plate, walking, those kind of things are more restorative because when you push your body, you are working against yourself. You are raising cortisol, which is breaking down muscle. You're not building muscle. You don't have the energy to build muscle. So I'm doing a little something every day. The other thing I'm doing every day, and this brought me back to my younger years, 
I took a nap every day of my life when I was raising my kids, when I was home, we, I scheduled around nap time. I did everything around nap time. Nine kids, absolutely, you need a midday break. And then that would be my reset. So I decided to bring back the nap or rest. Either one, it's laying down on the bed for at least 30 minutes. If I fall asleep, wonderful. If I don't, I'm just resting. I'm either reading or deep breathing. I'm not working. I'm not scrolling. And I might even do and abide meditation or something like that. So rest during the day. The other thing that I am doing is my sauna. And this is something that we purchased a while back, and it is for the purpose of detoxification, for cellular health, health for the mitochondria, lowering inflammation. And it is really, there's a lot of benefits to using the infrared sauna. And so I was doing the sauna three times a week. And so I upped it to five times a week. And all these things that I'm doing are actually requiring me to stop and restore instead of just drive through my day. I don't know how many of us drive through our day. And I realized that there's these transition times during my day that I don't stop and transition and deep breathe and get intentional and go from a place of peace. I was going from a place of, you know, drivenness or panic or got to get this done. And there was no peace. And I felt myself just irritated. I was so irritated at everyone. And just that low level kind of anxiety just kept me really in a negative space. I really had to fight those negative thoughts. And thank goodness I have the tools to do that. And so I began journaling. I journal anyway. I know some of you guys are not big journalers, but it's been a huge part of my whole life of just breakthrough, processing, prayer, just everything, recording things that are important. And so I went from just one time a day journaling. I went to twice a day journaling where I'm processing emotions and I'm I'm practicing gratitude, which is another part of my restoration. Because when the brain gets in the space where it's trying to problem solve all the time, it's looking for all the problems, all the problems, all the problems. And that's what it sees. That's what it finds. Whatever you focus on will develop. So I'm just seeing all these problems, you know? And so I really had to take my mind and renew it and make it start thinking on things that were praiseworthy and good and excellent and gratitude. There's a scientific study that even says that it shifts your biological body, you know, out of this lower vibration into a higher, a higher state. You can call it vibration, higher state. I'm going to call it the higher state, the higher me, the aligned Chris. And so I began, even though I didn't feel it, I could not even hardly feel that gratitude. I started practicing that daily. So I'm on day 18 now, and I can tell you, I am emotionally a different person, spiritually much more connected physically still struggling, which was hard because, you know, we want those results. We're like, yep, okay, I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to lose the weight. I'm going to see the scale move, or I'm going to do this. I'm going to feel better. And you know what? I have not felt better. And, and the other thing that I did, those are several things. I'm trying to think through my list here. Another thing that I've been doing for my nervous system is something called tapping. You can look it up, the tapping solution. I'll have all these links. You can do that free on YouTube. I ended up using the, buying the app because I wanted to be able to use the different programs, like one for stress or one for worrying or one for sleep or one for healing. And it's not any kind of woo-woo out there kind of thing. It is just about turning on, really turning on your vagus nerve by tapping on different parts of your body, acknowledging the negative emotion, which we sometimes don't do when it gets stored in our body, which is what I did. And processing it and then letting that go and then bringing in that affirmation, that faith, that growth mindset, which is where I want to live. Even if my body's hurting right now, I want to live in that growth space of faith, trusting and knowing that I'm going to get through this process. And you can even apply that with your weight loss if you are frustrated or your health journey. If you're frustrated, these things we go through are necessary for what we're going to experience when we do break through and what we're going to learn and how we're going to be able to hold more space for ourselves and other people and maybe even comfort other people as we get comforted during these, these times. So those were the main things that I have some other things in my toolbox, casserole packs, using that on my gallbladder and just a few little other things. But 
it has been like my job. I do these things first before I even let myself go into anything else. Of course, if I have a coaching call or a call or whatever, I'm going to show up for things, but I've had to schedule these things. And that's why I use habit stacking to do this. So I have a certain time that I'm getting in the sauna each day before I transition to mom doing dinner, going back in the home. I'm, I'm working from home and I see my kids, but when I'm like done working, I'm transitioning. I am using that sauna time and I'm listening to a podcast, something in, in, in Sometimes I'm in learning mode. I'm in acquiring, you know, information. Sometimes I just kind of want a story. So the other thing that I started doing again was reading. I haven't read really since I went to the beach and I just decided at night I'm not scrolling. I'm getting in bed at 830. Yes, 830. And I am journaling and I am reading. And so how did I get to make this happen? Because some of you are like, oh my gosh, I can never do that. So many people want me, need me, whatever. You know what? I had a conversation with everybody and I said, I am depleted right now. My body is doing this. I have some helmets going on from pickleball because I'm acting like I'm superhuman and I really need some space right now. And this is what I need. And I just asked for what I need. And some of you may not be able to do that, but there are still things that you can do. Our brain's like, oh, I couldn't do that. Well, you know what? I question that. I question that. If you got to the point where you had a diagnosis or you had something, could you then? You can now. So what I did was I talked to my beautiful son and daughter-in-law and I'm like, hey, I know I've been watching them occasionally. I just, I'm going to need to take a break for just a little bit. I still want to see you guys. The other thing was I'm not cooking dinner on Sunday. If I'm very depleted, we will bring in food. My husband will cook. I'll get somebody, I'll ask for somebody to do it. The other thing is I'm not making any plans with any friends to go out in the evening time for dinner or whatever. I'm not doing pickleball. I'm only doing things that I have the energy for. And every week I'm doing something restorative. Now, this has been a little bit heavy, hard on my budget because I am spending a little bit more right now than I would on self-care. But I know that it is an investment in me and it's going to pay off because I'm going to be able to be a better Chris, Christina, to my husband, my family, my friends, my business, my my members in my tribe group, my coaching members and clients, I will be able to be like, hey, I see this in your life and here are some things that you can do. And also I will be better for it. And I don't think that I can really get past this place without restoration. And so I have just been setting the boundaries with love and knowing I'm going to be back at it. And everyone has been so amazing about it because they love me and they want me to feel better and they want me to be better. And that's the culture that you set the culture of how people treat you and what you say yes to and what you say no to. Is it, is it hindering you or helping you? Is it at the expense of you or your health? If it is, I would question that. And with no condemnation and and no judgment about ourselves, it's hard to be a little bit needy. And I feel like something's going on all the time with me. I'm like, I'm the problem child. You know what? I just had to let all that go. It's just a story. And it's, it's not my story. My story is I'm in the middle of restoration. And these are the things that I need to do to take care of me. And so I committed for 21 days. I'm on day 18, but I've extended it to 30 days because I'm not where I want to be. And it's not taking away from anyone except my little bitty grandbabies that I want to go watch and take care of able to, you know, have little windows of time where, and and I, I used to do this when I was pregnant and sick, you know, I don't, I remember, you know, I would be way sick and way down a lot of years and during those times and I would find windows to be with my kiddos and to do things. And it's kind of like that now. So, you know, when I'm kind of low, I'll just say, Hey boys, come on in here, come in my room. I've got a heater in my room. They get, they love my blanket and I'll read a book right now. We're reading uh, boys in the boat. It's the adolescent version. It's really good. Um, sometimes I'll just let them play in my room, you know, cause they're still, my 11 year old is still in the play kind of mode. 
not so much my 13 year old, but I found windows, you know, to, okay, I've got a little bit of energy here. Let's go to the zoo. Let's go to McKay's and, and get some books or let's go one day. We, they wanted, they needed some clothes. So Walmart, they were so happy to go to Walmart to get some of their dry fit clothes and whatnot. And then we went to Costco and I let them have a little, you know, Costco food there. They love that Costco food. Anyway, what I'm saying is I wanted to share this restoration journey with you because I know women in midlife are going to hit this at some point in time. You may not hit it as hard as I'm hitting it now. And there was a great question that somebody asked me, what do you do when you haven't really gotten there, but you know you feel yourself draining? And the things that I've said that I am doing are things for you to do. Making sure that you're hydrating really well and you're moving your body, and maybe hot baths with Epsom salt. That's another thing that I'm doing. What can you do for self-care? Can you take a little bit of five or 10 minutes out throughout the day, a couple of times a day, and just deep breathe, or just practice gratitude, or listen to an uplifting song? Music is so powerful for us, and you can play music that can take you places. You can play music that can lift your spirits, And finding ways to create that oxytocin is really what I'm talking about. If you have a pet, hanging out with your pet, I'm serious, it raises oxytocin. Hugs raise oxytocin. Anything that you think of and you're like, oh, like when I think of my grandbabies, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. And that I have oxytocin right now. That opposes cortisol. Cortisol, we need cortisol, but chronic cortisol and elevated levels of cortisol are not good. They are going to drain us. So at the same time, I'm also doing some adrenal supplements right now. I'm supporting my body with a lot of things right now because it needs a lot of things. But I know that this isn't going to last and I can back off and I can evaluate, okay, what do I need to keep in my lifestyle to keep myself in a restoration mode, but also increase energy. And so I guess I'll pop back in on day 30 or afterwards and let you guys know what I'm doing. But for right now, putting the intense exercise on hold is important. And also making sure that I really am sticking close to the Trim Healthy plan, just eating on plan and not having, you know, any any junk that's just going to not help me whatsoever. It's just really wanting to make choices that are going to help bring me into that breakthrough and into that place of abundant health. So anyway, I wanted to share my my story with you because I've had a few people ask questions and I'll put some links to some of those things. And I would just suggest evaluate where you are right now with your energy levels and how you're feeling and how you're taking care of yourself. And is there a place in you that is kind of resentful? That's what I noticed is when I get resentful, it's because I'm not taking care of myself and or I'm judging a situation and I'm being a victim. And so I decided I'm not going to be the victim. I'm in charge of my health. I'm in charge of my happiness. I'm in charge of my schedule. I don't owe anyone anything except to love them. And if love looks like, no, I can't do that right now, then that's okay. And actually, all of my people are amazing. And they're like, yes, you go, girl. The other thing I know that I'm doing is I'm setting an example, not only for everyone I come into contact with, but for my daughters. You know, they're 20, almost 21 and 19, and they're energetic right now. But you know what? they're going to come to a place in their life where they may need to learn how to take care of themselves. And they're going to see that their mom, hopefully, was doing that and showing them something that is, it's needed, it's necessary, it's deserved, and it's not selfish. 